Well, speaking of the future, you got a pretty cool, awesome thing. Uh, uh, looks very futuristic. Looks very real, is what it looks like, actually. Hey, the future. Uh, our good friends at Unreal. Um, you may remember uh, Unreal, Unreal they've Tournament. A, they've done a couple of things. They've done a few things. Mm -hmm. uh, Epic Games. Uh, they've been toying. I'm going to say toying with because it's still a free product, and they're just yeah. kind of figuring yeah. out how to monetize their rendering platform. So as someone working in architecture and uh, digital vis visualization, we use things like Unreal to do simulations of spaces. Uh, yeah. If you're working in VR, you're probably using Unreal for hyper-realistic uh, renders. And now what they're starting to work into is real-time animated renders. And even though I will say the interface for this brand new application called Twin Motion, looks exactly like Unreal did in 2001. I don't understand <laughs> why they refused to hire a single interface designer, but that's besides the point. Well, how long, um, how long has it been since Photoshop's really changed? Um, it was probably CS, right? It was the last big. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah. like there's, there's, um, there's stuff in there, but it, it, it more it hasn't really changed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as the bones work really well, and the bones right. work really well, that's the thing. So if you, whether you're a professional like me, you're working in uh, Rhino, you're working in Fusion, you're working in SolidWorks, whatever, you can uh, AutoCAD, uh, DXF, all those fun acronyms. Or if you are someone who is doing a model of your home in SketchUp, um, you can export a step file and drop it right into Twin Motion, mm -hmm. and then uh, if you want to, like the most entertaining thing I did is I have I have a full model in my house because that's the kind of guy I am, uh, and I dropped that into Twin Motion, and then I could tell it the latitude and longitude of my house, and then I could pull in um, 3D map uh, objects because Google Maps and OpenStreetMaps they all have that 3D map stuff available. And so instead of having what we're used to or what we've been used to, which is like, I modeled my house in SketchUp. So here's flat textures and I have a quote unquote lawn, which is a copied and pasted 300 by 300 pixel texture of some grass. Um, it will use real 3D objects produced from everywhere else. And then suddenly my house isn't by itself in a weird green field. My house is on my street using the 3D objects from Google Maps, using full solar data, using moving trees, wind, full reflectivity. You can see it like all the vegetation changed through the seasons. It is bananas and it's free wow. and everyone should play with it. Wow. Um, it has a bunch of like free demos built into it, but like you just drop a building or an object or whatever into that and just play with stuff. And it has that fun. The one thing that Unreal is really good with is like being able to play. I feel even when you're playing professionally, but you can be like, oh, I want I want this tree to have a few more leaves. Oh, a few less leaves. Making that like approachable, you don't have to work in CAD to understand how to use this program kind of thing. There was another product. Um, I I signed up for the beta as if I had time to play with it, but there was another one they, they, they put out that was, uh, I think it was called Humanize. And, and it was about uh, uh, taking the, a rig of a face, of a 3D face, yes. very realistic. And I think, was it not using the webcam to kind of control that interface? I don't, I I don't believe... remember that. I do, I do remember the thing you're talking I was. I feel like I was watching something about that recently. And, it, and it's the, I, uh, the reason you're bringing this up is because you can, um, you can just tweak things, right? You can just like be like, I want more face... I want more wear on the face. I want bigger eyebrows. I want bigger lips, smaller lips. It makes it more like building a me and less like needing a doctorate in 3D rendering technology. Oh, it is called the uh, the Meta Human Generator, I believe. Oh, it's making me sign in. What the heck? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. As soon as I get past this, and uh, and yeah, it, it's it's it. it I mean, it's, it you know, completely centered on like like human human face, you know. Uh, kind of idea. Oh, it wants me to do a whole email thing. Uh, so, um, I will try to pull that up here momentarily. Um, MetaHuman Generator. If you want to look that up, I've been trying. I've been holding off talking about it until like I had an opportunity to hop in and uh, kind of do something with this, and it just won't let me look at it because it wants me to get to my email and get a code for some reason. Um, Digital humans, meta human creator, and it's free. You can sign up for it. It was, um, you know, I, I think there was like a waiting list or something because it was a little bit before I got into it. 
And uh, here it is. High Fidelity Digital Humans in Minutes, it says. Right for the updates. And, uh, yeah, it's it's just kind of a, a human creator. <laughs> just, you know, that's not creepy at all. It's super creepy. It's so creepy, especially when you compare technology like that with um, with AI. Like, that's where you get into this weird... Yeah, just, I mean, area. kind of imagine when you're creating your character at, at the beginning of Grand Theft Auto, just turned up. Yep. So, yep. And it's, it's it's really terrifying. And it's not even happening. I think it's happening on, on a cloud server with them, right? Like, it's not even, like, mm-hmm. on your computer. It's in browser with it. So uh, you can go in and play mm. with that. So... Look that up. It's uh, Unreal Engine. Oh, no, that's not a good domain. Look up uh, MetaHuman Generator and Unreal Engine, and you'll you'll find it pretty easily. So, and again, again, free to sign up, free to play with, and you know, until you plug it into something that sells a, a million copies, and then you gotta pay them, right? Just like the Unreal Engine. Anybody can download the Unreal Engine. That's why it's been so fantastic. I'm gonna, I'm oh. gonna go the opposite way on technology for my awesome thing. Sorg, <laughs> hey, Sorg, Sor- yeah. yes, Sorg. Before before you before you transition off. Mm-hmm. When you mentioned Unreal Engine, it, it brought something back that I remember from 11 years ago, since since its 11th anniversary, mm-hmm. when Epic put in uh, the Citadel demo for the iPad. Oh, That's what I was thinking of, too, yeah. Yeah. And the thing that that was 11 years, because I remember downloading that and downloading Infinity Blade before it was yeah. pulled when... Epic and Apple started to have the little slap fight. Uh, I remember playing that on an iPad and the iPhone and just how mind-blowing the graphics were back then. Look at the lighting effects. That's like on the original iPad, right? Maybe a three? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. The, 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 um, the one with the, the same resolution, uh, It was. it's not even close to the resolution it is now either. Oh, no, no. It's probably like 640 <laughs> or something crazy. Pretty like close, that. yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, using the same engine back then as they are now in terms of what, I mean, like you said, in terms of what you can do in terms of rendering and what's live, it's crazy. I literally have an iPad 3 right here, and I'm curious if that demo is still on here because that's definitely one that I downloaded. Mm. So, we're booting that up and see if I can play with that. 